Hey, what's going on? I got a really quick one for you. Uh, let's say you have a project and you're using Arduino, so you thought it'd be handy just to go ahead and put it on a prototype shield, so then you can put some headers on it, um, snap it onto the Arduino, and then you're good to go. Not a whole lot of extra interconnect wires to work with. So um, that's great and all, but let's say you're uh, actually using one of either the DIP area or the SMD area to actually put a chip on here. So if you're going to do that, uh, you have a ground rail and then you have the 5 volt rail because this, this 5 volt rail is tied to the uh, Arduino's 5 volts through this pin which you know will have a male uh, pin that goes down. So uh, if you decide that you want to run this at higher than the 5 volts that the Arduino runs at, what do you do? Well you have a couple options. First when you put the uh, the, actually it's male and female, I think it's female on the top and then you have extra long pins that stick through to form male pins on the bottom. But uh, when you put those on, you could leave off the 5 volt one first off. But the downside to that is that you don't have easy access to 5 volts up here if you need it. So if you're running um, like an LCD screen or something else and the Arduino is powering that, uh, it'll be a little harder to power it. Though there is a little trick to that also. You can use one of the digital pins that you're not using for something and just set it to high in your sketch and then there you go you've got five volts so uh, there's there's some workarounds but uh, I wanted to go with a different solution that way I can just uh, tie into this five volt rail for other stuff that I might need out here um, so what I did got out the old razor blade and cut through the trace so if I can get this to zoom correctly as you can see the uh, this really long trace or this really long uh, row in the middle here you'll see it says 5 volts you can see this really light blue trace comes over and connects to that 5 volt pin and then the ground one connects up here to ground and the ground one has another one on the back because you know it's a return path for current so you need a pretty good sized trace and this one has one on the top and the bottom 5 volt rail lucky enough for me there's just one single trace on the top layer that comes over so all I did is take uh, the razor and cut through and now it is not connected and I will prove it to you. So I have my Fluke 87.5 multimeter set to continuity mode so obviously if there's a connection it'll beep. So here is one that I have not doctored. So that pins on the 5 volt rail. Man I really suck with the camera work don't I? Okay. See? That one's on 5 volt pin. That means this whole row has 5 volts. So now if we look at the one that I cut, so you can see it's on the 5 volt pin. Nothing. all it takes. Take a razor blade, cut through the trace. Now you got to be careful doing this because uh, this is a really simple two layer PCB but uh, there's some more complex PCBs you know that'll have three, four, five layers and so if you cut deeper than just the first layer you could accidentally cut a trace that's in one of the lower layers and you could ruin your PCB or disable parts of it. So uh, you got to be careful when you do this but uh, you shouldn't be too nervous. Um, if if you have this exact specific application like I do, if you have a prototype shield, specifically this is, I believe this is the official Arduino branded one, and I think they're only like $4, I believe. They're pretty cheap, uh, and they're super handy for just doing really quick prototypes without having to waste a ton of time etching or, you know, having something shipped, some PCBs shipped from China <laughs> to save money. Um, it's a lot quicker, and they're cheap, and so if you want to run a dip package and, uh, you want the you want the voltage rail to be different from the five volts that the Arduino runs. Uh, you can just cut this five volt trace here, and then you will be good to go. Obviously, the ground has to stay tied together, or it won't work. You won't be able to communicate between your other stuff. But um, yeah, or you can just leave off the five volt pin, and then if you need five volts up top, you can just send one of your di extra digital pins high, or I guess you could send an analog pin high. But um, yeah, just thought I would show that neat little trick, and. Um, <laughs> I was, I'm, I'm always nervous when I cut um, 
cut into PCBs, but I shouldn't be because I'll tell you where I, the very first PCB I cut through was an AMD processor. Uh, I think it was a, an AMD Barton 2400 mobile, and I got the mobile one because the multiplier was unlocked, and if you uh, cut through a specific trace, and you need to be really careful not to cut too deep, if you cut through a specific trace, you could unlock... It, it was kind of like how uh, the motherboard would identify the processor you plugged in, whether it's the low model or a middle model or one of the higher models. If you cut through a right trace, it would unlock some extra cache and features. Uh, and when you plug it in, it would show up as the 3200 plus, like the really um, the higher spec AMD CPU. Now I could get I could be getting the details wrong. It's been like man, I bet it's been like 13, 14 years or something like that. Um, so it's been a while, but yeah, it was something along those lines. We had to cut through a trace to unlock, um, to unlock some more cash or something to basically get your cheap model up to the uh, higher price model, um, by doing some hard modding. And then there's another mod you could do too. There was a resistor that helped control the uh, voltage and, uh, you can get a pencil since graphite's conductive and draw across the top of the SMB resistor, uh, to increase the resistance or to decrease the resistance and uh, that would give you more voltage for heavier overclocking so anyways hard modding is fun and this is just a really uh, simple example I thought I would uh, show you so if anyone has run into this problem you're like crap I can't use a proto shield because I need my IC to run at a different voltage than my Arduino uh, you can still use that just uh, cut the trace so uh, yep somehow I managed to turn something that quick into a seven minute video so my apologies but <laughs> I will uh, see you in the next video. Bye.